You'd think after uh, 13 years of Conservative rule that it would be the Labour Party that would ultimately destroy the Conservative Party, not just take it down at the next election, but um, decimate it. To decimate something literally means to reduce something by 10%. I think it might even go beyond that. Uh, and I think it's going to be... I, I think we could find the Conservative Party of today is reduced to what the Liberal Party was reduced to after the First World War. I think we could see the end of the Conservative Party as a significant two-party force, which, which may mean that in practice we are thrown into PR by default. I think we will end up with one large party in the UK, which will be the Labour Party, and a scattering of other parties which will form His Majesty's opposition in some form. It's, uh, I, I, I don't understand how you get an alliance of opposition parties. I can understand how you can have a government, uh, a, a, a sort of lib-lab pact or a, or, or, or a um, coalition with the Conservative Party and the Liberal Party, but I don't understand how you can have a coalition in opposition. But I think that's what we're going to end up with after the next election and the uh, and the party which is going to destroy the Conservative Party as I say is not the Labour Party but according to the newspapers today it's going to be the Reform Party uh, Richard Tice's party um, and I get the Reform Party so confused with Lawrence Fox's Reclaim Party and, uh, and, and of course I'm supposed to get it confused I'm supposed to get uh, Richard Tice um, confused with Nigel Farage. Nigel Farage is the is the um, chairman of the party or something, or is the is the um, I don't know banner of the uh, Reform Party. And Richard Tice is the person who does all the work. But I, it doesn't really make any difference. There is even talk that Nigel Farage is going to seek election in the next few weeks to um, uh, to replace Mr. Mr. Bone. Uh, and that would be very entertaining. Very entertaining indeed. I think Nigel Farage should be in Parliament. I think he should be held accountable for being the single guiding force of Brexit. And I think he should be there to say, well, this is what I would do. Uh, well, let's listen to what he would do. He should be there at the centre. Because part of the problem of Brexit, if we allow for the fact that a referendum should decide what we do, and uh, there is debate about that, um, particularly given the fact that the referendum that we had was supposed to be for guidance rather than uh, implementational. Um, the, uh, so, so that is one debate. But the second debate, which is the one that I fall into, is that if we have a referendum, and if even by a slim majority... It, it succeeds in demanding Brexit, that should, be, that should have been implemented with as much um, thought as possible. And that means pulling in those voices who were responsible for the movement that, that produced the referendum in the first place. And yet everything was done to uh, sideline Farage. Now, I'm not saying this because I like Farage. I'm saying this because he was clearly the driving force of Brexit. So now he's in a position to stand back and say, well, it's not the Brexit we want. Um, so, we, so we are in complete chaos and say, well, it's not what he would have done. Why wasn't he there in the room to do it? So if he knew better, why were we not listening to him? Why were we instead uh, allowing Theresa May to fiddle while Rome burnt? Why were we instead allowing Boris Johnson to come in saying, get Brexit done and don't care about the details oh, um, and, and end up with Lord Frost's nonsense where he didn't sort out a replacement for Dublin 3, hence producing the small boats problem, where he didn't sort out the Northern Ireland issue, hence producing a situation where Stormont simply doesn't meet. So when we uh, and, and and to say nothing about the signals that Brexit has sent across to Eastern Europe, I would argue 
that Brexit uh, encouraged Mr. Putin as much as the indifference of the Europeans and the West to his seizure of the Kremlin uh, of of the Crimea in uh, 2014. I was in Moscow at that time, by the way, and 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 I saw the anxiety in the streets. It wasn't necessary because the West simply didn't care. I also remember significantly the speed with which the maps were changed around Moscow. The maps on the walls, particularly in academic buildings. And I was, um, I, I, I was officially teaching in one university, uh, but in fact I was, I, I, I was um, sent out to teach in, I, uh, I think, uh, M, M. Gimo and the Presidential Academy. I remember doing, an, uh, do, doing a series of lectures in the Presidential Academy, and I, I, I was, in fact, in the end, uh, supposed to do an entire... Um, season is it a season is it a session I can't I can't what you call a, a series of academic lectures um, an entire term entire term or two terms worth of lectures on um, liturgy which would have been great fun in the event I didn't do it because Covid interfered and after Covid <laughs> Putin's maniacal greed interfered where's my shirt well you know there we are Anyway, um, reform. Reform is trying to is trying to have an impact on British politics now because of our first past the post system. The chances of reform getting any serious number of seats in the next election is absurd. But they are scoring about nine percent in opinion polls. They are seizing. Um, the right-wing part of the Conservative Party, and I suspect, I suspect they're going to divide that vote and therefore allow um, other parties to to squeeze out the sitting Conservative member of Parliament. Which you know, most of those Conservative sitting members of Parliament are not doing a good job. They should certainly be squeezed. Um, but whether or not we should credit that and that squeeze to somebody like Richard Tice, I find that slightly shocking. That Tice now becomes the person who will actually put even put an even bigger squeeze on the next election than Farage was able to do with UKIP and with the Brexit Party. That I think would be ironic because Tice is not Farage. Tice is a poor imitation of Farage. Uh, there was a press conference um, which uh, uh, t today, which um, is part of Reform's general election strategy, and, uh, and 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 of course the question is whether or not Farage will return to frontline politics. Uh, in Newcastle, uh, Richard Tice said that. Um, uh, he was going to stand um, uh, in, in, in Hartlepool um, and that uh, this is a seat held by Labour since 1974 um, before the Conservatives seized it three years later. Uh, and that was part of the strategy to, 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 to deal with apathy in the region. He says, we, we've got good representation in the northeast, a great team. It's obviously, in a sense, a vibrant part of the red wall seats that we specific that we are specifically targeting. And there's frustration, he said, huge disenchantment about how the Tories have betrayed Brexit. Um, and uh, he's asked whether or not he would move aside if Farage um, won, um, was uh, <laughs> one wanted the seat for himself. And Ty says, well, we don't get into titles. I think Farage, president, has made it very clear he wouldn't stand again in a first-past-the-post election as a candidate. Uh, but he could be very involved in campaigning. And I, I think at the moment Farage is only too happy to appear on television um, and is, uh, is, is keeping his powder dry and his image 
warm. It's like somebody is sitting on the loo seat, keeping it warm for him. Because in the end, Tice is just is 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 just the Kermit to Jim Hansen's hand. Um, it's uh, it's it, it, it's it's Nigel Farage's hand which makes um, Richard Tice go wild. And um, uh, the resignation of Jenrick, the failure of the Rwanda scheme, the failure of Sunak to deliver on the migration stuff. I, frankly, Sunak, Sunak's target is to appease the right wing. He ought to start looking at the other side of the Conservative Party, which at least would be solid. I think he should abandon the right wing to um, reform on the understanding that they're not going to get very many very many seats anyway but it could it could well be the reason why the conservative party loses the next election it could be the the pressure of tice rather than the effectiveness of starmer that ensures the election um, goes against goes against um, uh, Sunak. I, I I'm also slightly amused by the fact that Reform's chief executive is Paul Oakden, and Paul Oakden, I seem to have come across him once before. But there we are. Uh, UKIP has a very has a, has a very has a very wide reach, doesn't it? <laughs> 